If you are thinking of a bank that takes care of customers' needs by providing quality services with flexibility, reliability, and innovation, think Trust Bank Limited. With Trust Bank Limited Mobile Banking, you enjoy services such as balance inquiry, mini statement, funds transfer between accounts, exchange rates, mobile airtime top up, stop ATM card, checkbook request, and pin change. Our real-time gross settlement allows the customer to instruct the bank to transfer funds from their account to another account at another bank. Our expertise and experience in international banking is both legendary and the envy of the market. Retail banking, one bank, different amazing packages. Whether you are interested in savings account, current account, time or fixed deposit account, lending or overdraft, our team of dedicated staff is always ready and willing to help you out with your transactions as you wish. Corporate Banking Trust Bank Limited offer the most convenient services for deposit accounts, credit facilities, trade finance, bond and guarantee and foreign currency account. With e-banking, you can make electronic bill payments and online banking and enjoy 24-hour access to your cash with our ATM. With the largest network of branches and agents, we give you the convenience to receive funds as you please. Trust Bank Limited, proudly Gambian. Fay lempo warugal la si kepo ko hamne domi reo minga ak nyufi deke. Bo feke ne chi at mi sa kom kom wesu na nyar fuka ak nyenti june dalasi. Mbete wer buneka dinga amluto lo si nyari june dalasi. Lempo silangurgi di sukande ku ngi lige yokute reo mi. GRA moy banghas bunguri gambia sas ngi rumu feye ku lepo lui lempo chi bi reo mi. Betak na GRA di yegal fey kati lempo ine warugal la pur nyu fey lunyu nan withholding tax on contract payment. Ma nam bepa contract bu way joxe te ci bi rew mi lañu tokkon xali ci contract bi ngeen nangoto war nga ci wañi ci xayma témer bu neka fuka bu féké na contract bi dekku ci bi rew mi bu boba di nga waro wañi témer bu neka fuka ak jurom li moy lempo buñu nan with holding tax on contract payment li moy lempo bi nga xamné yow mi joxe contract waru gal la nga wol batiku dem fey ko ci makani jiaré tax office bu la gëna jégé mbété ci banki jiaré jagléel pour fey lempo war nga djébal lempo bi ci diri fuki fan ak jurom ganaw bi nga wagné ci xali ci contract bi amut ben contracto bu ñu téggel fey lempo bi xana mu fekk né nguri gambia ñoko djégalé bolé ci project yi nga xamné mbotay ndimbali ñokoy dépense jra di fey ku lempo ngir yok for the first time in the history of the gambia gambia printing publishing corporation proudly introduces the billiomatic exercise book printing machine the machine has the capacity to print more than 20,000 books per hour. Yes, 20,000 books per hour. It also prints magazines, newspapers, calendars, flyers, normal books and all kinds of printed documents plus items at affordable prices. With the Bilomatic printing machine, GPPC can now render high quality and non-size restricted printing service supply across the sub-region. Rush now and partner with GPPC for all your public and private printing service needs. Print with us today and you'd be offered highly professional, reliable and efficient service delivery by our team of experts. The Gambia Printing and Publishing Corporation is here to meet all demands and is reliable at all times. For more info, contact us on 437-4493 or 437-4402. GPPC is Gambian and it's yours. Communication, connectivity is everything. We ensure that the links never sleep. Quantities and qualities, all in our data service, providing efficient, 
reliable voice and data service. We believe if you're not up to speed, then you're going backwards. Communications have to flow as fast as the speed of light. Whatever business you're in, having someone who understands your needs is critical. That is why we just don't offer you technology, we offer you solutions. Enjoy Gumsel's internet broadband anytime, anywhere. Your national operator, Gumsel. about um, this uh, young man who was declared missing since Friday. Uh, it was alleged that he was driving a taxi and he was never he was not found since Friday. Today the police confirmed they found his dead body uh, at Salaji and uh, as we speak the youths of Bakao are uh, demonstrating. The police have confirmed arresting a suspect. Uncle Dio, when you hear something like this, um, what comes to mind? It's been really rampant nowadays. Uh, we have people going missing, people being killed. Um, is this insecurity in the country at this point? Yes, Fatu. Definitely there is a lot of insecurity in this country, which is very, very scary. Because virtually on a daily basis, mm -hmm. you hear about robberies, you know, stealings and, you know, killings and all those things. Yeah. Uh, honestly, it's a, a very scary situation. This is definitely not the Gambia that we used to know. I don't know what has gone wrong, and uh, probably we can uh, blame some of it on the lack of addressing some of the issues like security sector reform. At least, you know, I mean, if uh, security was, the security sector was correctly addressed, probably, you know, they could have been able to address some of these issues. But it's a very scary situation, definitely. And the situation is, um, this government, when they came in, in into power, the main, the main issues were to, 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 to the security sector reform. Exactly. Because exactly. when 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 Jami was leaving, mm -hmm. uh, everybody thought the country was not safe. And they, 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 in fact, this is why we still have economic in this country, because intelligence is showing that they need to be here to make sure. But people are now saying it seems like the economic is not even here to protect us. Who are they protecting if all of this, this is happening? People don't face, feel safe at home. People don't feel safe in their cars driving. People don't feel safe anywhere. How effective is the security sector reform that is ongoing right now, Uncle Dear? Well, of course, I mean, the security se sector reform is uh, virtually not visible. You know, I mean, uh, we've heard about the government uh, talking about security sector reform since day one of the coalition government. But mm -hmm. virtually nothing has happened. We have not seen any changes whatsoever as mm -hmm. far as the security sector is concerned. Mm -hmm. And with regards to economic, you know, well, of course, I mean, they, they said they are sup supposed to maintain peace here. Yeah. But when it comes to internal security, probably that is not their area to address. So, mm -hmm. I mean, so we don't know why they are still here. As far as I'm concerned, there is peace in this country. There is no peace to maintain because peace is already maintained. And what we have is internal insecurity, which is, I mean, which definitely should be addressed by, by our own security forces. But I don't know. I mean, what is going on is 
certainly not sustainable in this country. Oh, um, Amadou, you are a politician and obviously as a Gambian as well. Are you worried about what is going on right now? It is scary. I, I don't go out in the evening. I don't feel home, safe at home. I was saying it a couple of weeks ago, I, I have all the security measures in my house. Thieves came to my house and got into a bedroom of one of the, the people in the house and demanded money or they would kill them. These are very scary things that are happening to us daily. And up to this day, there's nothing that anybody can do. This happened a day and two days after it happened in our neighbor's house as well. So at this point, you don't even feel safe in your own home. Are you worried as a, as a Gambian as well? Um, thank you, uh, Fatu. I am, of course, equally worried like any other Gambian. Um, uh, in fact, before the probably physical challenge, insecurity, even the mental uh, stress, I think, is even uh, way too much. Yeah. Um, uh, we are not used to situations like this. These are things that Gambians used to hear over or see over films and hear over around part, other parts of the world. Mm -hmm. We don't know. Yeah. Um, I think it's, it's, it's completely brand new to us. Mm -hmm. And I believe um, the government and then the apparatus of government that are in charge, that are responsible, must uh, double up their efforts, do what must be done. Mm -hmm. uh, security is an issue that cannot be compromised, um, that cannot be uh, given uh, probably um, a second thought or so. Uh, security must be handled. Uh, with, uh, with uh, immediately as it is needed at any point in time. Mm -hmm. And I think um, every other aspect of our economy, the people themselves, everything depends on peace and security. So like you talked about, we are talking about this insecurity over television. Mm -hmm. Investors around the world will be watching this. Yeah. And that alone is sending a it's message scary. that there is not a place for you to invest. Yeah, tourists. So it affects almost everything. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, as politicians, uh, we should come up together, make sure that security is at once, you know, they are taken care of, handled um, for the safety of the people and the people that are residing in the country. Not you alone, myself again as well. If I, if I, even if I don't, I don't send my kids out in, in the night after after Mahiri prayer. That's the end of it. They have yeah. to stay home. Whatever I want, I have to go do it myself. Even no matter how busy I am, even if I'm, immediately if I come from work and I need something in the house, I have to make sure I go to the shop and get it for them. Yeah. So because I'm, I'm always also every time worried about um, uh, you know what would happen to them if they are out. So I believe um, it, is, it should be taken as something that highly important, a priority at the, at the moment, uh, because when, when that's not done, it leads to what you just talked about. Yeah. People coming out and trying to give security to themselves. Yeah. Do you understand? And also those are not the way that you know, we, we want. And we have seen people take taking the law into their own hands. For example, right now they're, they're protesting in Bacau. Exactly. At some point I see the police still throwing tear gas mm -hmm. because they cannot control the crowd. Exactly. Now, in my area, when they catch the thief, they bid them to like, you, so at some point you are trying to even get rescue the thief. That is taking the law into your own hands. But at the end of the day, what else can we do? Exactly. Well, that's, that's the situation because I think what the police should have done probably as part of the security sector reform, is to reintroduce these uh, uh, patrols, you know, nightly patrols in vicinities, in areas where, you know, uh, there are, <coughs> I mean, uh, areas where, you know, thieves are very frequent or, you know, these are um, uh, bad people who are, who are very known to, be, who are known to be in certain areas. Mm -hmm. At least they should be introducing those things. But we don't expect, of course, I mean, we understand the constraints of the police. For example, in, in my own police station, I mean, in my area, that's Carnifying Estate, they don't even have a bicycle, let alone a, a vehicle. <laughs> so you don't expect them, you know, I mean, you can understand the constraints there. But I think the government should be very, very serious about uh, security. And in that case, then they should help empower the police so that they can be try to be visible in very, very, I mean, in various areas of our neighborhoods. And that's the only way they can be able to address this insecurity thing. Yeah. And but that brings us to our next uh, topic, that is the, the budget. I looked at the Ministry of Interior's budget. Um, <laughs> if, the, if the police, if, tra if the tribal vote is even more than what the police are allocated, how can the police secure us? You go to some police stations, they don't have a vehicle, they don't even have a tear gas or tea, how do you call it, paper spray mm -hmm. that common people like me will have. They don't have it. How can they, how can they deal with, manage, you know, deal course, with criminals? Yeah, yeah. Now, this is the issue. That is why it is important that we look at the budget and see what is allocated to these um, departments. Because if the police budget 
cannot even have uh, cars or fuel. Sometimes you tell them, they will say, we don't have fuel. Exactly. exactly. They don't have fuel yeah. to patrol. Yeah. Now, if they don't have that, how can we be secure? Well, that's it. Yeah, yeah, because I mean, I, I, I mean, uh, like you said, your yeah. your place was raided by thieves. The same thing happened to me also. Yeah. Uh, thieves came to my house. They got into my bedroom. You know, stole a lot of things from there. The following morning, I had to go and report to the police. I had to take my car and bring the police to yeah. look at the situation, return them, and that was the end of the story. Yeah. Because I mean, what can they do? I mean, they have no means of even going out to look for the thieves. They don't have the facilities. They, ha they don't have the means. So, you know, I mean, it's a, it's a pathetic situation we are living in, very dangerous situation we are in. That's, that's true. I mean, resources are, are necessary, are key. And, like, uh, we have a budget. Um, and I think it's important that uh, the, the members of parliament start to be very serious with uh, allocations that they need with regards to our It budget. seems like they're only busy enriching them. Yeah, um, so. It's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. Yeah. What we have seen recently is actually unfortunate. Um, uh, exorbitant races, you know, for one or two people. And after all, um, in the first place, they have talked about raising 30% for the civil servants. You understand? Some of the uh, civil servants going home with a thousand dollars or thousand five hundred as a race, and having somebody else sitting there, you know, making those kind of monies, I think doesn't doesn't add up. Um, af after all, um, they should be the they are the custodians of our of our, of our, of our, of our funds and their allocations and. And, and everything. So I believe um, leadership should start from them. The way forward should be shown by them. Um, I'm really not happy about all of that. But I think the, uh, the security issue, the police need to be supported with, uh, with, 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 with resources. And then we need to start prioritizing what resources that we buy. You know, sometimes you see certain government officials buying a car of about 3 million, 2.5 million. A government director, what are you going to do with a, a, a V8? You understand? When you can buy a rough for that you can be spending, let's say, about... Less fuel. Less fuel. Mm -hmm. you, you've seen certain, sometimes, government directors going home with maybe about $25,000 as coupon amount. Does it make sense? From a car that only takes you from your house to the office and to the office back to your house. Actually, these are things I think that needs to be, to be regulated. Um, it is institutions that are responsible, that are in charge, must take the bull by the horn, come out and, and make sure all of these things are, uh, are just you know, wipe out for the, for the good of the people. At this point, it seems like it's everybody, or every man for themselves, because it's either you are taking your own security by yourself or else, you know, your family is going to be in, in, in danger. And the people that are supposed to secure us, um, at, I mean, I, 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 is this the reason why every Gambian wants the economic to leave? We are not secure, but they are still here. And it seems like they only, I mean, it seems like they only see here to secure the president. Is that why they're here, though? Well, uh, as you said, um, it's a kind of a fankung fankung situation. Everybody is for themselves, right? When you look at the National Assembly, that's a very good example. Yeah. I mean, as Amadou said, they are supposed to have been responsible for the allocation, the budget allocation and all those things. Yeah. But here they have allocated to themselves, you know. I mean, can you imagine the speaker, the deputy speaker, and others being paid thousands and thousands of dollars of responsibility allowance, Ruby being allowance. paid, robbing allowance, being paid, City I mean, allowance. telephone allowance, you know, house rent, and all those things, and thousands and thousands, one person, uh, in, that is in addition to your salary. Yeah. I mean, what is your responsibility? And I see your a responsibility lot of people who say your 130, it's not just I mean, 130, they, I, after everything, I mean, it's close to 3,000, I mean, 100,000 I mean, dollars. Everybody, account. every worker has a responsibility. Mm -hmm. If you can pay the, I mean, the speaker responsibility allowance of, you know, I don't know what, 300,000 or whatever it is uh, per, per annum, I mean, what about the teacher? What about the, uh, the nurse? What about somebody else? They all have responsibility. In fact, they have more responsibility than the speaker. What responsibility has got the speaker? That, he, I mean, his salary cannot take care of his responsibilities. I think this is, this is daylight robbery. So this is the situation. Honestly, as long as the people up there are not thinking about the people, but they are thinking about themselves, I mean, this kind of situation will continue. And I think, for me, I said this, I worked in a parastatal and I know how much parastatals are getting. You, at parastatals, these are all the things you get, um, fuel allowance, responsibility allowance, telephone allowance, even degree allowance, you get all of these allowance, right? You get that. So government officials were not getting it. Now they're also trying to uh, match up to these parastatals. So I think generally what we need to have, that's why when they 
when they talked about the 50% increment, I'm like, that is not our solution. Our solution is a salary restructure, making sure those at the bottom mm -hmm. are properly taken care yeah. of. Because the more you give everybody across the board the same percentage, mm -hmm. the rich are going to continue to be rich, course, and the poor are going to continue yeah. to be poor because mm -hmm. the gap is not filling no, up. No, so is. instead of giving everybody across the board 50% or 30%, it should be a proper structuring where you're giving the people underneath, you're giving them 80%. You, if you give somebody $3,000, you give them 80%. What are you giving them? Nothing. But if you give one person who's earning 20,000 50%, he's getting 40,000. And this person is getting way, way less. So yeah. until we restructure, we are not going to make sense in our salary um, increments. And with that system, Fatu, sometimes what is, what, is, what is most absurd, you, mm -hmm. you go into an institution, within the same institution, you find somebody that makes millions a year. Yeah. And then you find an employee who cannot even, that whose account will be minus something by the end of the year yeah. in the same institution. It, my, my belief is like, um, if the cleaners themselves, the uh, staff that they call auxiliary, yeah. if the cleaners are not there on time, do their work. We are not able to do anything. Nothing will be done. Yeah. But that, that, that auxiliary staff, you know, in all institutions that you've gone through, most of them will not have to save a dime by the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Okay, there are other people that will be in the same institution who will be able to make savings of millions by the end of the year. Mm -hmm. So that gap, is too wide, and that, that brings about what you're talking about, need an overhaul of the system and the restructure, bring something that's real, that's, that's, that's real, that's visible, that's feasible, but also something that will change, do you understand, the kind of a structure that we have in place, do you understand, that will, that will empower the people, that will develop people, and so on. I think, I think we have, a, we have a, a, a lot of things to do. Is that not all part of yeah. the civil service reforms that we were supposed, supposed to have? To have been. They're supposed yeah. to. Mm -hmm. It seems like everything is crumbling because the foundations were not properly laid. Yeah, exactly. If we have had the civil service reforms, mm -hmm. these things would have been factored in. Everything else, but it seems like we're doing everything piecemeal, mm -hmm. and some of them have not been started. So that is why we're, you know, we're doing things, oh, let's increase salaries, but the increase is not effective because people are not getting the, the right increment they're supposed to get, and the, our budget cannot sustain it, then it becomes a disaster. That's, for, that's quite true. Exactly. I mean, that's exactly what we uh, all uh, I mean, we are talking about. When this uh, the government came to power in 2017, you know, I mean, we're talking about security sector reform, you know, yeah. institutional reform, civil service reforms, and all those things. But, I mean, uh, hardly any of it is visible. Nothing seems to have been done. Even, uh, for example, the, I mean, we're talking about electoral reform. People like Solo Sandeng, we are all killed as a result of clamoring for electoral reform. Up to this very day, we are still using the, elect um, the yeah. electoral system that was on the Yajame. The same constitution, the same electoral law, everything is the same. Nothing has changed over six years now. I mean, it's, definitely there is a lack of seriousness as far as this government is concerned with, you know, I mean, the reforms that we were, people were expecting, honestly. Now, talking about laws and all of those, now let's talk about the much talked about video, Honorable. And I think you have indicated in some way, I don't know, because I remember after the elections, um, UDP came out and said, the UDP, your party, GDC, and some other parties came out and said um, they're rejecting the results of the elections based on the fact that they believe um, they had evidence that the electors. Um, the electoral um, list was bloated with numbers. Uh, Non-Gambians were registered, and, and they went to court. Um, obviously, because of technicalities, yeah. the Supreme Court threw it out. It was not based on facts. And no. I think it's important for people to know, because the Supreme Court did not even look at, look at these things. They only said, because of technicalities, they, 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 they threw the case out. Somebody like you came out vocally. A lot of people will not say these things because when it comes to politics, people will say, I don't want to talk about this, especially intellectuals like yourself. But you came out and said, um, you made these serious concerns, raised these serious concerns about whether non-Gambians voted in our elections. And you had a lot of, lot of, lot of um, backlash coming out, especially from the, from the NPP camp. Now today, uh, what we have seen is um, a National Assembly member from Senegal, Kazamas, uh, a member of the ruling party, uh, Makisal's National Assembly member, uh, coming out and saying 
Senegal should be cautious. And in the context he said it though is very important. People mm -hmm. should understand. Mm -hmm. He was warning his party. He was warning his country exactly. that they are very strict when it comes to giving out their voter registration or their national identity. That being the reason a lot of his people around the sub that area, mm -hmm. uh, Bunkiling, I know Bunkiling, these are Maninka places, Bunkiling mm -hmm. and all those areas mm -hmm. saying they are now all in possession of Gambian ID cards during our registration because it's easier to get Gambian documentations. All you need to do is just get two people to, to be your witness. Now, when that came out, when I saw the video at first, I had to go back and back and back to make sure this was coming from the parliament. But when I saw the speaker of their house, who I know, I'm like, okay, that's, that, that's, that's them. These are serious allegations. And I, I read your, mm -hmm. um, your, 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 uh, your opinion last night again. I'm thinking, well, what is going on? How serious is this Uncle D.A.? Now, it is very, very serious. It's definitely a, an indictment on the system, uh, uh, the way that we deal with our uh, national documents. You know, it's, uh, I mean, as you said, the Senegalese MP was kind of addressing problem within Senegal. Senegal. So he was not actually very much concerned about, about what he I was, mean, Gambian, uh, the Gambian scenario. document being, but yeah. the thing is, I mean, because uh, as far as he's concerned, maybe they were, they are very strict in the way they, they issue, give, I mean, yeah. their national documents. Yeah. That to an extent that, you know, those people around the border find it much easier to, to get, get hold of Gambian Even though documents. they are Senegalese, they find it course, easier to get a Gambian really, document. You know, yeah. He was being cautious exactly. to tell Macky Sall, exactly. let's loosen up a little exactly. and have a special registration exactly. around the border. Exactly. If not, you nip the yeah. neck as yeah. Gambia. That's, that's quite true. I mean, the problem is that because people, I mean, especially politicians in the Gambia, would go out and mobilize non-Gambians, you know, they go across the border, go, I mean, uh, non-Gambians in this country as well as across the border, mobilize them because they want to get as many votes as possible. They yeah. don't care about the consequences of giving our documents to non-Gambians. Yeah. They don't care about, as far as they are concerned, they will get more votes from these people. And that's what, I mean, it's a very serious situation. And I think the government needs to address that. And the two institutions concerned in this particular case, are the Immigration Department and, I mean, the, and the IEC. IEC, that's the Independent Electoral Commission. Those are the two people, uh, two institutions that actually issue out uh, ID, I mean, identity documents. These are important national documents. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, of course, I, I had the director of, uh, director general of the um, Immigration department talking about you know denying the fact that his people have been issuing any i mean but we know that during the age I mean, time they used to go up to the customers and issue them with identity cards i mean yeah. because uh, the, the getting the id card was a prelude to getting the national i mean the yeah. voters card. voters card so that's the thing i mean and i'm sure this is i mean the situation is still going on the practices still going on in this country especially in the fact that i mean now the, the ijami people i mean are controlling i mean they are very powerful within the borough regime so you know i mean they understand the system the same they know how to go about it and i'm sure they are advising the borough people how to go about it so this is it i mean it's a very serious situation and i think the government needs to address this because we don't want our i mean uh, national documents to be falling into wrong hands and in fact they are already in wrong hands you know these people can use this document for anything i mean it's not good for the uh, image of the country at all um, um, Amadou, uh, you, you are a politician as well, and I think um, for me, um, even some of us who are not even politicians, these are serious concerns. Yes, we go to other countries and acquire their papers, but we do it through the right way. Everybody has a right to go to another country and, and acquire their papers through the right channel. But if claims like this are coming openly, um, what do you think um, should be done? I think we should just um, go back to the drawing board. Um, uh, probably it's possible that the, the right channel have been, have been uh, followed, but the right is not too right. Um, when we're talking about registration for elections, um, I think uh, a lot of people have made uh, their reservations in the process. Yeah. Where an alcohol will just attest you yeah. know, that you're a citizen and you're given a voter but registration. But that's our law as well. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's the, the process could be right, yeah. attaining the you know the mm -hmm. But actually, does it uh, does it does it does it solve whatever problems that we may be seeing? And then I think this is so serious that um, government should take it as as very very important mm -hmm. because these are allegations not made everywhere anywhere in the streets of Senegal, but in the House of and by the National Assembly a sitting by, by a sitting. Do you understand? National Assembly member. Yeah. So actually, that that itself alone, I think, gives it so much weight that it must be considered. 
And then the institution, like uh, 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 the Honorable DA said, the, the institutions, uh, I, I was expecting the IEC you know, to come out as, as, as immediate as that was, that was shared, come out and provide more evidence, talk to the people, give assurances that our electoral system actually is intact, that Gambians were only the people that have been registered to vote. Do you understand? And then also, I think um, it raises a lot of alarms, even for, from the side of the judiciary. Yeah. Probably this may be one of the reasons why one can still say, oh, I think the judiciary should have listened to cases. Yes. Do you understand? Which actually didn't happen. So um, they are very serious allegations, and I would urge the government of the Gambia to take it very seriously, yeah. um, conduct investigations as soon as possible, engage probably the Senegalese counterpart, yeah. probably to help and support in bringing evidences about this. And actually, if they are found to be the fact, the truth, I think uh, whatever needs to be done probably uh, should, be, should be done with immediate effect to remedy what the situation that we have in. And I think um, uh, it sends a lot of terrible signals because yeah. a Senegalese in Senegal, an MP, is telling Gambians that you did not elect your leader. Mm. Do you understand? So th I think, I think, I think you, they're just telling us that we probably are not sovereign. Do you understand? So for me, when I, when I saw it, um, I was totally, totally mad with, with the comments. And actually, that's why I expect uh, my government will do whatever it takes as yeah. soon as possible to see to it that this has been addressed in the ways and manner that it's supposed to be addressed. And then also from the immigration, it's not only about coming out and refuting allegations. Do you understand? Let them take instances, try to go to those places, see whether people that are non-government citizens actually to see, uh, engage the Senegal is going to support to verify if there are non-government citizens that have possess our national documents, actually that, I think um, uh, it is important when certain things happen, the institutions to stand firm and establish the truth. We're doing that, not for the current regime also, but you're doing it for the future. You just touched on something that is very important, institutions. The institutions. Exactly. That is why we need strong institutions exactly. in this country. Exactly. Look at the National Assembly. Everything is politicized because, oh, I am part of NPP, I'm voting for the budget. I am an opposition, I'm voting against the budget, not based on rationale. Mm -hmm. That is what is happening. When you talk about institutions now, when this happened, I saw a standard report where they spoke to the IEC. Their response, we have focused on the local government coming elections. Yeah. Like, are you serious? Exactly. Somebody, a senior member of a government is telling you, as your people, your ID card is within, our citizens are having your ID card. They are not, they are not Gambians. Mm -hmm. But you are telling us, oh, I'm busy with this. Mm -hmm. That yeah. response itself. If you, if, you, if you read my piece, I yeah. mean, that's my that, uh, opinion piece. I mentioned a name of a, I mean, a Senegalese citizen who actually acquired a Gambian document. That is Save the Village. That's an alcala of a village in, across the border in Senegal. Yeah. I mean, when uh, somebody actually, after he read my piece, he came back to me and told me that he actually knows the person personally. And when he was in Choya voting, he saw him on the line. I mean, and he called the attention of the I mean, presiding officer mm -hmm. there that this man is not a Gambian. He actually is the head of a village yeah. in, across the border. The IEC man said, well, it's too late now. We of cannot do anything about yes. it. Because, I mean, somebody should have challenged it, but it has not been challenged. So he's okay. He can go ahead. Yeah. And, you know, and I think the, uh, the IEC man was right. He was right. I mean, that was not the pl place. Right? So I think the, the opposition parties also mm -hmm. failed in their responsibility. That's what I was going to say. You know? The opposition yes. also yes. failed yes. in their responsibility. Exactly. Exactly. I went to vote in Lemon, and there was this particular guy that I brought into Gambia as a tailor. So he was doing tailoring for my mom, my late mom, way back. And when I went to vote, I was doing live streaming, showing people what was happening in Lemon. And I saw this guy in the queue. Yeah. I even remember calling him his name. He's Senegalese. Yeah. I, I don't know whether he's married, whether he got his papers through the right channel. Mm -hmm. I doubt it, but he voted. That's I could it. not stop, but I know he's he not can, Gambia. Yeah. So the opposition also, if we blame the government, mm -hmm. We will blame them because Absolutely. there was the revising court. Do, you know, the revising yeah. court was here. They could have gone and challenged some of these things, and they did not. Now they are crying foul. Yeah, when it's too late for some. It's time. too yeah, late time, because yeah. our register is every five years. Exactly. Now what happens now with this situation? Well, yeah, they will come and vote in the next election. I mean, nobody can stop them. They are already registered, and that's it. Yeah. Esa, um, we are welcome back.
Thank you. <laughs> Why were you late? <laughs> so, what an engagement. Sorry. I know. No, but we're talking about um, the viral video that um, the Senegalese um, MP, you know, talking about Gambians having, um, Senegalese having Gambian identification. When you saw the video or read about it, what was your first um, reaction? Yeah, um, <clears throat> I think like everybody else, I also um, saw the video on WhatsApp. And it reminded me of a conversation that DA can attest to that we had in the community of Gambian scholars mm. sub list. Okay. Um, you remember DA wrote a, wrote a piece yep. after the election to say no oh, Gambians voted in the election. That was the. And it generated um, a lot, lot of controversy and yes. debates. Mm -hmm. um, to the extent that when he shared this on the community of Gambian scholars sub list, um, I remember some people. Um, the likes of um, Chernobari, you know, challenged, you know, him. Um, what evidence do you have? And I was also wondering because I mean, intellectually, that is how we can challenge each other. Yeah. Um, if if academics or intellectuals make assertions, yeah. um, they provide evidence, they prove it. And I also said that well, I'm also interested for DA to tell us what is the evidence that non Gambians voted in the election. But I mean, I, I realized that the conversation took a different dimension. Mm -hmm. Instead of asking DA, pressing him to provide evidence, probably that could help us. Yeah. Because the UDP had challenged this in court, it did not work. Um, and all of it. The reason I'm starting, to, I'm jumping yeah. to this to yeah. look at this from this angle is that yeah. what the parliamentarian was trying to insinuate mm -hmm. is not necessarily only that these people have Gambian documents, no. but they vote in elections. Yeah. Because he said during their campaign, mm -hmm. you just need two, al two elders to attest. Yes. And where do these two elders attest? It's not for ID card, no, it's, it's not for, for birth certificate, for it's for voters card. Yes. So what he was insinuating is these people can run. That is why I said, even after the, I think when he made the statement, there was, you know, a lot of talks around there so I think he came out to say that he said this in good faith um, trying to apologize or whatever so I mean the conversation there people were like okay who are these non Gambians so the extent of pushing to say I mean people voted for Barrow because of XYZ now you see the guilt in them because DA just made an assassin to say non Gambians voted mm -hmm. he did not say these are Senegalese or Guineans, or Lebanese, and or Malians. And he did Malians. not say who they voted for. Exactly. He did yeah. not say who they voted for. Yeah. All of a sudden, you jump and say, they voted. I remember these were the, these were the arguments of the Chernobari. Mm -hmm. these, they voted for Barrow because of X, Y, and Z. Yeah. I said, now you're guilty. Because now you're even going to the extent of mentioning nationalities mm -hmm. that I talked to some Guineans, some Fulas who live in LRR. They said they voted for Barrow because of the aggressive behavior of their Mandinka neighbors. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it shows us one thing. We have dishonest intellectuals in this country. Hmm. People who are supposed to falsify this narrative are the very ones that are peddling this narrative. Yep. And it shows that we are at a very dangerous stage yes. in our politics. Now, the conversation is around citizenship. And mm -hmm. I think it's important as Gambians we have this conversation. Yeah. Citizenship. Who is a citizen? Because whenever you question somebody's citizenship, yeah. it seems like there are people who want to jump on you. Yeah. Is it a crime for one to question somebody's citizenship, especially who is not a citizen? Our constitution is very clear. Who is a Gambian? Yeah. There's no controversy around that. If we want, we can change the law. Yeah. It's simple. Mm -hmm. But as long as the law is there, yeah. The Constitution is, has clearly stated who is a Gambian. Mm -hmm. Father, if I am born in this country yeah. and none of my parents is a Gambian, the Constitution clearly says I'm not a Gambian. Yeah. Absolutely. If we want to change that, let's change the let's law. Change it, yeah. But as long as the law remains the same. Okay, but also we have to understand that this narrative was peddled by President Barrow. Remember when the registrations were on? He was out there to say, I mean, there are people who are questioning who is a citizen, who is not a citizen. You remember the black black? Yes, the issue. black black. They mm -hmm. call them black black. Yeah. But people have right to question who is a citizen, who is Absolutely, not a citizen. Yeah. If you saw someone that you brought in this country, yep. I mean, you have right to say whether you are a Gambian or not. If the person has acquired the Gambian citizenship by naturalization or by, by, by marriage, it's simple. Yeah. Prove it. That, yes, I'm a citizen now because of naturalization. I've stayed in this country for 15 years. I've stayed in, stayed in the Constitution. Or I'm married for seven years as required in the Constitution. But it's not a crime for people to question other people's citizenship, especially if they are sure that this person is not a citizen. Cross-border voting has been an issue, not only in the Gambia, it's an issue in Africa. Yeah. But Gambia and Senegal, it's not something new. It's been happening here. I don't know of Jawara's time because I wasn't even, here. Even Jawara's time. Even Jawara's time, right? Mm -hmm. But Jamia's time, it has been happening. Yeah. 
scholars wrote about that. Professor Abdullah said in his book, you know, the paradox of third wave democratization told us, in fact, figures, in figures, statistics, non Senegalese that voted, or non Gambians that voted in this country in, during Jammer's time that we are voting. So it's happening now. Just that we could not rely because at some point, mm. I mean, the UDP and all other opposition parties will have challenged this. Exactly. But when they did not challenge it, I mean, the UDP cried foul. But we cannot substantiate that because this was yet to be proven in court. In court. But now we had a National Assembly member of, in Senegal telling us that in very clear terms that he has people in his area who have Gambian documents, insinuating that they vote in Gambian elections. Esa, I want to comment before you even go further. You said something that was really, that really touched me because you talked about how when DA brought this topic, it changed, the, the, the narrative changed, and it became more of a tribal thing. Exactly. Instead of nationality, Insta now it became inst tribal. Instead of making it a national issue, mm -hmm. people started peddling it as an, a tribal et, et, yeah, issue. Ethnic exactly. Exactly. And at some point, somebody like me will be even scared to say this. When you say, the Gatul, mm -hmm. tribal yeah. and the mindset is, at maybe I'm not even talking about it from that angle. At some point, I'm going to let it go because I don't because, want to be labeled see, a tribalist. See, you see, let me tell you one this, thing. Yeah. This is the difficult conversation we it's, are not this, having. This conversation, we are all scared we must, to we, have. We must, and that is why. We are all scared to have it. And that is why. Because when I say that, I'm like, D is a fuller. Why is this guy accusing him of you know, attacking the fullers, yeah. you telling him he's attacking his own, his, his own. He was very grounded on what he believed in. But the dimension that conversation was taking was very scary. And, this and people stayed this away. This conversation must take place. We must have this conversation. It's, it's only through an honest conversation that we can solve some of these things. Mm -hmm. Whether people are comfortable with it or not, it's their problem. But we must talk about it. Because at the end of the day, it has a lot of implications mm -hmm. for our country. You see, people just coming left, right, and center. No wonder when we do census in this country, we are talking about exponential increase in population, talking about 2.2, 2.6 yeah. million, 2. Point whatever million. At the end of the day, mm -hmm. I mean, citizens we know have certain privileges, certain enjoyments that non-citizens don't have. You know what is happening in Ivory Coast? Mm -hmm. People questioning what, what are our citizenship. Mm -hmm. A non-Gambian can become president of this country one day. A non-Gambian will have the same treatment in a public hospital in this country, in our schools in this country. But the minister himself said that. The minister of health stood in the, in the, in the National exactly. Assembly and said the reason why our medication is not enough for us is because non-Gambians non have our I ID card. Are we forgetting about this? Exactly. He said non-Gambians have our ID so, card so, and so, they have access so it to was everything. Peddled, it was peddled by, especially by politicians. And yeah. President Barrow has a role to play in this. We must say this. Because at some point, when he was questioning people going out to question people's citizenship, he was very specific that when you are a Fula, they said you are from Guinea. When you are a Jola, they said you are from Kazama. When you are a Wolof, they said you are from wherever. Senegal. Mm -hmm. Senegal, right? So it's only a particular tribe that is from this country. <laughs> but you see, we don't need to go, because sometimes they bring this narrative to say, or this argument to say, if, okay, where, I mean, if we want to go back where everybody's we, from, we, then nobody's from here. Yeah. Look, the state system came into existence at a particular point in time. The Treaty of Westphalia came in 1648, bringing about sovereign state system. The Gambia became a sovereign state in 1965 when we gained an independence. So we have our laws in place. We have the constitution, which is very clear who is a Gambian, who is not a Gambian. You cannot take us back to history Absolutely. when you want to trace the origin of humankind. Then nobody is even from this world. Let's go all back to God. But we have a country, we have our constitution, we have our laws, and it's very clear X, Y, and Z is a citizen. X, Y, and Z is not a citizen. Why do we need to have problem with that? Most, but mostly, it's only people that are guilty. Whenever you mention the issue of citizenship, because they are guilty, probably they are not citizens or they are not people that are not citizens and they connive with them, they gave them documents, they helped them to get documents in this country, that will be out there to be defensive. And this conversation must take place. We can't have, we can't be equal with non-citizens in this country. This is not xenophobic, but this is very clear in our law, unless and until we change the law. So non-citizens having a say in Gambia's affairs, I mean, this has been happening. And the parliamentarian who spoke in Senegal, in the Senegalese parliament, just is out there to vindicate, mm -hmm. to tell us that, well, this is happening, is a reality. So as a country, I think what we can do, 
And this, of course, when this thing was out, we have never even had the government talking no, about this. not even no. the president. It shows they are not even concerned about this. And the IEC so it shows that they are guilty. Because if they are not guilty, this is a problem. This is not even about opposition. It's not even about partisan politics. This is about our national That's documents being problem. easily accessible by non-citizens. If a Senegalese parliamentarian, Senegal just next door neighbor, raised that in parliament, in parliament, in the house, national house, raised that there, as a government, I think the best thing to do it's is to raise concern that you will do investigation, you will resolve this matter. But that is not happening. And nobody is showing concern. That is why the conversation must take place now. The, t the conversation must take place, but the impact this can even cause when it comes to security, insecurity. Um, during the National Assembly election, when UDP came out after the election and said um, non-Gambians voted, and, and in the presidential, and then when the, uh, the, uh, the Supreme Court said we, you know, threw the case out because of technicalities, they decided to take it in their own hands. We saw what happened during the National Assembly. They were at all corners. Remember, they had a clash in Kiang. Was it Jara? No, no, yes, Jara, Jara. 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 No, Jara. 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 Because there were vans that were coming in at night, and they stopped them. And the in, Badibu, in Badibu, between Honorable Suleiman, yeah. Sao, and Majam. No, Bayasongo. Bayasongo was literally fighting with people in the border, not allowing them to come in because he believed they were coming to vote. Yeah. So Badibu, they were able to, they, they, they really had an issue there. But in Jara, Kiang, Jara, Jara. Jara, in yeah. Jara, they had to fight. The police came because they stopped those vans in the, at night. In the morning, they came, they slept there, and they d denied them access into the village. The police had to come. At some point, they had to throw tear gas at them. Now, if that is supposed to happen in every border post, now that... Um, security that's insecurity. That is insecurity. And, and now what we have heard is that the UDP leader is even saying that they'll make sure that they don't vote. They will make sure when they, they, they don't When they have vote. the documents, what can you do? Yeah, if they say we'll make sure you, can you do. don't vote, what happens? What happens that's now? What that means there are going to be clashes? That, is yeah. how that could be a problem. That yeah. could be a problem. Mm -hmm. So that's why the government needs to be really involved in this. They need to take a step. They really need to look into the issue. I mean, these people have documents now. They can vote in the election. You mm -hmm. can't stop them because they have the documents. So I think but the there, answer, is way, yeah. there is a way. There is a way to address this. And I think the government must so concerned. I, I think the answer is also the electoral reforms. You know, everybody is talking about. But yeah. there is, it's not. But the electoral place. reform, and I can tell you, and there is still a problem with that. Because I remember I had a session with these parliamentarians, the fifth legislature, mm -hmm. the new electoral law that is coming. Mm -hmm. This issue was debated there, and the debate was whether they should even maintain this Alcalo Attest attestation, attestation. Mm -hmm. yeah. or they should not maintain it. Yeah. They're saying they're maintaining the Alcalo attestation. Yeah. These elders that will testify will be there, but there must be interview. Yeah. Alcalo attestation can come, but the interview will take place. Take place. Now, there, here is the problem. Esanjai, who is born in Talinding, mm -hmm. has no idea of communities around URR. Yeah. You take me as an IEC official, and I'm there to interview DA, who is 50 years or 55 years old. Interview DA about, I mean, being, a, being born yeah, in that, born in that area. Yeah. You cannot even it's, it's a problem. So the parliamentarians themselves are not helping. It's all because of the partisan politics that is there. Because yeah. I remember when I had discussions with them, some of them, some of them, really, like you see them, like incumbent side, clearly, clearly, supporting the Alcalo attestation. Mm -hmm. By all costs, it must be there. And those, I mean, parliament is all about voting, voting even yeah. their sessions, wherever they have them. It's, it's about voting. And the majority yeah. of them voted that the Alcalo attestation should stay. stay. Now, when it goes to the plenary stage, that is where they will debate. And when they debate there, the likelihood is that it's going to be maintained because this always favors the incumbent. Mm -hmm. And, and the incumbent majority, parliamentarians yeah. will likely vote for it. For it yeah. So instead of solving the problem, it's going to create more problems. We saw what happened in Banjul. The issue of Alcalo attestation. Yeah. Yeah. The mayor giving attestation. It went to court. But at the end of the day, what can the court do? They just declared that, yes, the mayor had no powers to issue attestation, but these attestations have been issued now. And the cards have been obtained. The voters' cards have been obtained. What can you do? That's the lacuna in the law. That's and that must be addressed. That must be addressed. We will get back to this again, because mm -hmm. the reason why we started this show also is Honorable um, Amadou is going to have an exam, and we need to talk to him quickly. I'm looking at the time, and I see him. Yeah, he has only 15 minutes to go. Now, Amadou, let's, we will come back to this again, because yeah. this is very important. Amadou, you resigned as the second deputy party leader of the GDC. What happened? What is going on? Reading through your resignation, though, you had strong words for the party. You, you talked yeah. about happenings in the party. What really happened? What is going on in the GDC? Yeah, the, the strong words is as a result of um, just 
weighing my investment in the party. Um, I didn't join GDC. Um, I was there in 2015 mm -hmm. when we come together as Gambians yeah. to create the party. Mm -hmm. So, and um, we made our pledges to ourselves and the public um, because myself, the reason I went into politics then was I am not okay with the system that was in place. And I believe that uh, Gambia needed a change. And I also believe at that time, we being the younger people, would have to come in to the free and join and push for a change. Mm -hmm. This was why actually I came into politics at the time. And then um, it's, not, it's, not, it's not after the GDC was formed that I came to join GDC. I am one of the founders of the GDC. Yeah. We created together with our bare hands. Yeah. We had principles. Um, was talking about principles of democracy, good governance, love of a country, building this nation and, st and things like that. So it's just like um, um, what we say in, in our local language. So there may be hamoto finger finger jam gadelo finger jogi because at the end of the day, um, it's not GDC alone. But what's happening in political parties in the Gambia um, is it's terrible. Um, instead of they turn themselves as institutions and create people, build people for for leadership tomorrow. Uh, political parties nowadays, what they do is they destroy people, especially the younger generation. So, I, 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 I had access to your personal resignation that you sent to the party leader, mm -hmm. and they were really strong words. Um, you said, we have turned a blind, uh, blind eye to many unacceptable acts and behaviors, believing that your leadership will someday see the light and accept to be supported to drive the party in the right direction. Unfortunately, this has not come to fruitile. I cannot accept or be part of a team that support throwing away the party's executives elected by the Congress as a mayor paper. Even even though such utterances have been accepted by absolute majority, the executive with that, I must see that I do not longer I see that I do not longer fit in that executive committee, for I have taken enough of the lack of democracy, transparency, and good governance that exists within the executive of the party. Mm -hmm. So you are saying there's no transparency, transparency, mm -hmm. no democracy, no good governance, nobody listens to nobody. These are serious allegations. Um, uh, um, yeah, I, I, what, what I know, what I know that uh, that had happened is like um, we are going into Congress. Um, one of the things that um, I was very firm with is that um, if we are to go to Congress, we must have our constitution on the table, and then we do ask by the constitution ask. Um, and actually, that stand was not popular within the executive. What is the what what exactly does the constitution ask that you're rooting for that was not popular? What exactly was that? Okay, um part of you are a troublemaker. <laughs> no, well, well, well. But okay, I l let me just I, I don't want to go because No, but, actually, but the, look, but, you know, yeah, no, the no, reason no, no, why yeah, is let me, important. Let me come in, let me come when did when no, when when one, Dominic one thing, resigned, uh, when Dominic mm -hmm. resigned, mm -hmm. we called him here. Mm -hmm. Because political parties are governments in waiting. Exactly. Now, if exactly. you guys are throwing stones exactly. at President Barrow every single day, now, you have mess in your house. We're going to yeah. talk about okay. it. One, one in, thing, in fact, one, before, one thing before you happens. answer, yes. I don't know whether it has any connection with MC. I'm going to see Barrow also, your resignation. No, I'll it, come. Again? Even him, he went to Barrow. I'll come to that. Really? Oh, he went to Barrow. I'll come to that. I see. Go ahead. What exactly were you pushing for in the party that didn't did were not being was not popular that okay, and okay, it was that, that, okay there was something that happened um uh, there was a technical committee that was formed yeah to look after the congress um when we had a meeting i made it clear to the people that in fact in the first place uh, the technical committee that that was formed does not exist anywhere in our constitution um being the second deputy party leader i did not even know the existence of that that, that, that technical committee I don't know who are the members of the technical committee. Do you understand? I don't know what actually their mandate was. And when we had a meeting, I brought this up very firmly, and I said, this cannot be allowed to go. Do you understand? And actually, like I said, it was in popular. Do you understand my stand? Um, and, and that's why, when I wrote, that's what I said, because uh, actually, I cannot uh, condone, do you understand, situations like that. I made a pledge to the country, to the public, to the people, that 
I was elected by the Congress. I was given a mandate by the Congress, and I, you know, took an oath that I would be executing the mandate that they've given me. And one of those is like uh, something like that. I just cannot accept. But I mean, you, 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 you just said, and I read it. You were one of those people who formed this party. You are a founding member. Mm -hmm. Your signature is at IEC from mm -hmm. day one. Mm -hmm. And this was in 26, 26, 2016, 2016 when things yeah. were really not mm -hmm. nice. Exactly. This was during Jamie's time. Exactly. You took so much risk. Exactly. If, if just about the technical committee. Mm -hmm. You know, you didn't think you could go back and uh, talk about this with your party leader because, and uh, you know, the entire executive were just walking out like that. Mm -hmm. Is there other things? Hana dem si baro bi mota, hana danga waje dem because dem onga si baro de. How many years? Politic. We have to be honest with these politicians. Paru, uh, yeah. You okay. go to the president, yeah. and you come back, Paru. you start having issues with your party. Is that me. the reason, Amadou? Fatu, um, uh, Is that the reason? No, Fatu. I for me. Uh -huh. Um, I, 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 I maintain a full-time job. Yeah. I work. Yeah. Uh, politics does not deter me from, doing, from working. That's mm. one. Secondly, uh, if it was interest, that also would mean that I would have been, I, I have stayed in GDC because of interest. Um, since 2015, not 16, for me. Yes, for me, 2016. Yeah. But for me, in 15, like I told you, as I'm sitting with you, there's not a single penny of GDC that has ever entered my belly. So, if it, it is that financial gains would have taken me somewhere else, then actually it would also still mean that I, would ha I was there because of financial gains. I'm just trying to tell you there, what motivates me is not financial Financial. means. Do you understand? Mm. Yes, like you said, um, um, I visited President Barrow, and that was mon week, months ago, mm -hmm. but I'm still, you know, in the GDC. Do you understand? Yeah. Pre pre preparing to leave. Prepare. No, no, he he no. just resigned. No, no, no. He resigned no, yesterday. No. My, my resignation, like I said, um, has nothing to do with the visit to well the president. Lie, well, I, you know, I just this this uh, today I, I I spoke to a radio and I told them, they asked the same question. I told them I have a price. Yeah. Depending on who pays it. Mm -hmm. But I have a price. What is your price? And my price is, you have to show me accountability. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Good governance, fundamental principles of democracy. I am telling you here right now, this is my price. Do you see that? Whoever the, thinks. Do you see that with the NPP right now at this point? I, I, I don't have to talk about NPP. I'm asking, do you see those no, things? I don't have to talk about you, you know why I, You know why I don't have to talk about NPP? Yeah. Because NPP does not even have any play. No, yes, I'm asking what I'm doing, you what a I'm question. About. No, what I'm refusing to, what, you know what I'm refusing? Okay. Yeah. There's NPP. There's UDP, there's DOI, yeah. there's another party and another party. Yeah. Do you understand? Because everybody's going to NPP these days, that's why. <laughs> yeah, but the, the same thing will not... Open. So, yeah. I mean, what I'm trying... I mean, okay, you said since 2015. Yes. I mean, that's a joke, yes. but then you said since 2015, a penny, not a GDC penny. Yeah, he um, was very clear with that in his yeah. resignation. I mean, someone could argue that, yeah, this guy since 2015, GDC has, has not given him any money, mm -hmm. and that's the reason why he wants to leave. Mm -hmm. Right? Someone will argue that. Mm. Because but you have not benefited anything but from those, GDC those financially. That, those that will argue that, I can tell you, are just people that have not had the chance to know who actually who, I am, who you are. or that have worked with me. Mm. Or in fact, that we have ever shared something that both of us want. Mm. Do you understand? So if there are anybody that will think about that, just because the, they have not had the luxury. I, 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 I understand. understand. That was just, that was yes. just, a, that was just a, I mean, yes. what, the, the important question me. here that I want to ask people is... People that know me, or you go to school, people, yeah. students that I have taught in this country, actually, they know actually what. The, the question that I want to ask is, mm. you talk about absence of transparency, democracy, governance, whatever, whatever. Mm. When did you realize that this is missing in GDC, that you have to resign now? You joined, remember you formed this party in 2015. Mm -hmm. Is it that there have been these principles all through or from 2015 up to now 2022 and now all of a sudden these values have disappeared? These principles have disappeared to the extent oh, now you have to leave? It's been going when on. did you realize this? When? No, I, 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 it, it, it has not been there like since 2015 counting to date. No, 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 no. A lot of things maybe develop over time. Do you understand? Things, many things develop over time. But also like uh, you said, um, we are in democracy and um, this being dissatisfied of things uh, doesn't mean it has to, you would have to change it. Yeah. It's a democracy. When we meet, at the end of the day, like you said, we went into voting about issues. So all that you can do is that you express your stance about issues. Mm -hmm. So there will come a time that you feel actually, you probably maybe I have tried and then tried and tried. So you cannot change. 
you cannot do much about it, then actually what would be best for you to do at that time is probably to go out. So it's because of the technical committee issue that you are leaving the No, party. no, it's because of my fundament, my beliefs and faith in the constitution that we has been elected and endorsed by the Congress. And that is, that is regarding the technical committee here, because you've, you've just been specific about no, the technical committee. Yeah, that's, that's an one. example. I, yeah. You know, you know um, there are other examples. trying to drag me into love. I want to no, talk but you have to talk about this. No, no, no. But you I just, I, I would have to give you something. And that is why I tell you that that's one of, that's, that's an example. Mm -hmm. One of the things that had happened, you yeah. understand? Mm -hmm. um, actually, for me, what I believe is like um, there is no way that uh, we can accept, you understand, a committee that has been formed without the consent of the executive. But this committee has always been there. It, no, no, it has not Never. always been there. Right, because I, one of your, your, your this, PR, this, your this communication just, officer was here to say that you normally set up a committee, uh, Congress, towards Congress. The, the Constitution has highlighted committees that the party can set. Mm -hmm. it's, it's there. Mm -hmm. You don't just make up a new committee anytime. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The committees are there uh, prescribed by the Constitution and they are fixed in there. Mm -hmm. This technical committee just maybe came about a month or two ago. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? And in preparation for the Congress. So it has not been there. Are, are you going to join another party? No, to be very honest, uh, to tell you the truth, my preoccupation for now is not about joining a party. Mm -hmm. What I want to endeavor to do. But now, it's a possibility. No, I, I mean, I would say it's, it's a very slim possibility. But it's a possibility. It's a, no, you know, you know, that's always... That, that's never said no. But it's a possibility. Yeah. Probably you're a mathematician also. Never said never. Never said never. Um, never said never. I'm not a mathematician, we but I We don't want I to lose say, you to, politi to, to other things, no, though. No, what I'm saying, what I'm saying, what I want to do my, uh, 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 make my occupation now is I feel that a lot of people like me and the youth are bleeding from inside for love of country that we want to see good governance that we want to see countries that are doing more than other African countries are doing. Do you understand? Mm. There are many Gambians today that have lost their values because they are just not aware. So what I want to make my occupation now is to do as much as I can to educate the masses. Do you understand? To come out in the open, educate the masses, tell them what their rights are, what they should fight for, what they should look for, what they should ask politicians to present to them. You understand? Civic education. I, civic education is something that I want to make an occupation for now. So yeah. Are you about, going into activism now? About Not activism. <laughs> I'm a politician. Hmm. Well, you understand? GDC, what is happening at GDC? Your, 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 your okay, exam another time question. You MC Jam, MC, so he has to go for exam. MC Jam went to Baron. And I, so I watched him over here. Hey, hey, MC. I don't even want to make comment. I don't know what is MC even saying. No, no, no. But I don't know fact, what he's saying. He said, he said Baro has friend. asked him to join NPP. MC is where this. Where, 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 where Ahmad also meet with Baro. Ahmad, where, where, did Baro tell you that? Did Baro tell you that? Just be clear. Did he tell you that? My did he invite you? My conversation with him was, was, was very, very personal. Mm. Mm. I see. It was very, very personal. Okay. Um, and actually, like, I don't want you to throw me to where because... Like MC said, when I, when I met with President Barrow, he was very gentle. We've talked about a lot of things. Including politics? Including politics. To join We've talked NPP? about a lot of things. To join NPP? Did he no, invite you to join the party? He didn't tell me, come on, join NPP. To be very honest, he didn't tell me, come on, join NPP. Okay. But he said he wants you in NPP. No, no, no. Let, let me just help you. <laughs> let me just come in. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. uh, but the issue here is, if party leaders mm -hmm. meet the president, yeah. have they ever uh, 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 disclosed the details of their meetings. They can, they do. They, they can, they, can. they should. Now, now if it's have they, they ever done so? I don't that, know. I it don't doesn't know. matter whether no, they have done no, it. No, if no, they no, have no, not no, done no, it, we no, can no, start no, with you. My issue is, mm -hmm. my issue is, yeah. if a party leader meets the president, mm -hmm. People don't worry themselves. No, they worry. We do. Ismail met the president and, and, we, and he we, even we, talked about what they discussed. Hey, hey, hey. no, but, but what I'm saying... Fire, we, we <laughs> will okay, put fire yes, on him. Yes, Say yes, your leader. You just, you have no, to be specific. Kande, your leader, no, Mama Kande. What, what I'm just saying... No, Kande did not meet Baro recently. What, what no, 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 it was before. He wanted just, to meet Baro, but they did not meet What I'm just saying, I know. The issues that have been created around MC Charm might have not been created if it was that a party that made it. No, it will, it will be. It will yes, be. Myla. It will be. Now, you know, it, now what the I mean, MC is also different no, from another party leader. The borough one because, M see, MC is more vocal Very against vocal. some party yes. leaders in this country. Than, than, against than 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 his own party leader. The reason why it was the, the going was tough for Ismaila, the conversation was tough for Ismaila also, it's because, because he was vocal. He was vocal as well. 
So what, what I'm trying is to it, say here is that, you see, when you said you, you cannot discuss tell personal, us all these things about the president and you go there you, and when you discuss something you personal, personal, personal with the president, I don't know personal what. You personal. Maybe your education, maybe your job, no, no, I don't know. No, look, look, um, you see, uh, if, if truth be told, yeah. if truth be told, mm -hmm. um, there is a huge failure in the political system in the Gambia. Yeah, true. Um, if you're working in the streets today, mm -hmm. then you meet supporters of political parties, of yeah. GDC, for example, mm -hmm. and you ask them, what is the ideology, or the ideology of the GDC? They will know. Why are you in GDC? You meet UDP supporters, and then ask that ideology. What is it? Why are you supporting UDP? Why are you behind UDP? What do you believe in UDP? They may not tell you. The same thing for NPP and another party. Now, this is creating this problem that we are talking about. If actually that had existed, if somebody is leaving a party to another party, then we would all know that probably this party's ideology was democracy. The other party's ideology was a socialist system also. Mm. I am leaving democracy for a, so, uh, for a social system, maybe, probably. Mm -hmm. Do I? Do you understand? Yeah. So these things have to be in place. But all, even but socialists, no, so they, these days no, no. are the promoting no, democracy but, but, but as well. Just come, yeah. just come here. What I'm just trying to say mm -hmm. is the reason why, look, uh, what, that's what I was saying earlier. They say political parties are not building the youth, but they are destroying them. Yeah. Because the moment somebody... Look, Maybe your political party. Probably, no, 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 I'm not saying it's not. I'm not saying GDC. <laughs> I'm not saying GDC. But what I'm just trying to say is like, um, uh, since people are in political parties, they join political parties for reasons, yeah. probably they should also have the right, if they don't see the reason no more, to, to, to look leave. for something. Okay. Amadou, just one more question. But, but you, just talk about, you just talk about the issue of transparency here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. GDC is lack of transparency. But one reason why you are leaving. Us. You don't want to be transparent to no, us you're what you discuss with the president. Very, no, no very, you are not. Very, you are no, not. Very, very At this point, you're being With the president, because you say personal. very transparent. Even he's leaving. Even he's leaving. No, this morning. Because even he's leaving. This morning, when I spoke to that radio this morning yeah and it raised about the same issue i told him look i i have resigned i've highlighted my reasons for doing so to the party sorry to the uh, to the executive yeah then i told you uh, the supporters of the gdc probably i think it is time that they stop being uh, uh, just just Perfect. following the trail and start asking relevant questions to the party why is this happening what is going on you, now it is incumbent upon the party to come out do you understand and tell the members of the party, why things are happening. No, no, no. So are you he who us? alleged have to prove. Are you, you are the one who is alleging. Are you GDC telling, is not alleging anything, Amadou. No, no, no. You, you are the one alleging. No, 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 no. For me, what I have alleged. Are you telling us you know, that? As, are you telling us that the GD at the GDC decisions are made without consent from the, the entire executive? Is that what happens at GDC? What I what I think but what I said is just what I have already just narrated what happened. <laughs> do you understand? But I, I think it's time for his exams. Maybe that's, that's what I, what <laughs> I, I, I don't, you don't want to have a tough conversation Amadou. before you hey, forget. Amadou. 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 Wow. No, no, but you have Wow. Fat, fat, uh, wow. Fat, uh, fat, uh, wow. Understand? It's not, about fin it's not about financial gain. It's Bita financial. Is financial gain. <laughs> I'm telling you. Yeah. Do you understand? It's not about financial gain. Why man tell you, suma ane akone wo jawa, mu neka kelifa, neka mak, am silu mo o, ma anda mo silu mo o, gom lulu, ma dembe jamano, mu wan lene lu uteng lulu. How would you feel? You, you leave. So feke hale nga bo hamne, yo hamu lo nuru politics, neka si politics. Na danga, da ko da fata, sa rai singe na, da ko bayang adem tok tere seke nalaw. Understand? Yeah. So why didn't you organize system in Bangham Nini? How about you get the demo them fennin? You know how long you Understand? Lum leka lamo ut. Take a lot of digger. Especially if you borrow the money, the money you borrow. So fake it again. Exactly. So fake it again. Take a quam. Take a week. Yeah. You know, represent yourself. Then you bully. Then you kill. Then you have to take a serious one. Yeah. Well, you are a mo amut. You are a mo. Party money. That's why I'm low. I'm the mom. I'm the tahawal. Kufa boka boka ngiro, kufa gei na gei na ngiro. Man na gei na labo kwa palanga dem. Man lima de gismo. And I think to be honest, what he said makes sense though. Um, so wahene, sunit wahene from the opposition camp. If anybody resigns from any party, new gismo dem si si ruling MPP birek. Then they get a lot of bullying. People go after them, new insult len. They didn't want to hamne tam democracy nak dafa am si reu. Gisnga, nit 
man so here I MPP, do more content because then the opposition more vibrant. In every country, we want vibrant opposition. But also, people should respect people's decision. Then book at them, soon get them. By you them, them. why not Lima de Wom wait and Fung and Menu Nuntam Nua? Because democracy, democracy, no. Let's not do the bullying, mm -hmm. but we have a, we should have an opinion mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. political, especially young politicians. So, guys, you come in the MC jam, you watch it. But then you get a bit too much MC Mofi they talk, Luba Ro def neck gain an audio. What nasi? Like it, you want to put MC Baro? You tam what nasi? I'm opinion. Of course, you tam as a politician. Then, then you I do disagree. Wow. People, mm -hmm. man, such comments. See them mm -hmm. colleagues, and I say this is wrong. Mm -hmm. When people re say they resign or something, ah no. Lila, they're going to NPP, yeah. they're doing this. No, we don't know unless they go to MPP. Let's let them let's let them be. And because they, maybe they're raising some questions, especially looking at your resignation letter. I'm not saying the one you wrote on your Facebook, the one you sent to the party leader. I saw it. And I was concerned when I saw it. I'm like, whoa, this is strong. If somebody like him is saying this to his party leader. That is really serious. Hmm. Maybe, maybe there are some inter That's of why course. I believe there were issues happening at GDC, and I do know there are some things that are happening there. But I'm not going to say that here because I'm not in position to say some of these things that are happening. That's why I'm pushing you. But I think people should be at liberty to move if they want to. But I think the reason why a lot of people speak also, people want vibrant propositions. Mm. That is the fundamental of democracies. Mm. But here, I'm so let me see in Kumbel. Why have I met you? Why did you come to Kumbel? Mm -hmm. uh, 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 wow. uh, 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 I'm mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. a member of politics. I'm 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 a politics. I'm a member politics. I'm a member of 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 I understand? At the moment, wow. understand? I'm not Ben Mohammed in particular. Uh huh. Mohammed in Moy Sumo it to pull your damn far. Okay. Sumo it to Moy Land. Joke Pascal Family in Mandat Mumiti. Wow. Understand? Moy use being a hamlin in Yunko use Domi Gambiency. Use. Understand? The loan you call the Pinaka of Moy politicians across. Neku party be well a party belly. It happens across. My lord of Mumiti. Je suis un homme qui a été 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 un homme qui Wow. Understand? Uh, internal democracy with a foreign So, li wara xew moy tay moy ngogi bu fekke mu ngay def lo xamne jaadu wut. Mhm. Ñi nek ci biti ken warta xaar. Wa. Tay yene is fekke dafa dafa am lu nek am nako adresser bu fekke wax la nga address ko wax. Su fekke yenen step nga wara jël pour challenge lolu nga jël ko challenge ko non. Mhm. Man dama de wax ne manam success government. Mhm. Wala failure government dafa defend ci success opposition wala failure opposition. Ak civil society legal. Understand? Su fekke biti bi dafa fail. Si bi dafa fail. Quand Parti Yifan Nekon, nous avons un parti qui nous a dit que nous avons des réformes. Pour nous. Nous avons un parti qui nous a dit que nous avons des réformes. Nous avons un parti qui nous a dit que nous avons des réformes. Nous avons un parti qui nous a dit que nous avons des réformes. Nous avons un parti qui nous a dit que nous avons des réformes. Nous avons un parti qui nous a dit que nous avons des réformes. Nous avons un parti qui
is the driver of that seat. Mm -hmm. boss driver mm -hmm. president. He's an executive president. Mm -hmm. president Baro. So amuton so amute drive will be na mabuka def li. Pati yibo konsi government biye munu si dara because mo mo president. Te gis na infi constitution bi binko yobe si national assembly bi. Pati yunga wa ni yep sen guy then vote for it. Baro guy mi nyoko vote against na nyo dega. No lo mo hew. No lo mo hew de na nyo dega. Do I vote na for 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 elect elect constitution bi? Do I vote for it? What I talked about? Do I vote for the constitution right? UDP voted for it. Other people voted it. It was the people that were siding with the president that voted against it. And the government and send positions gis nen ko standard serialize ko na ler lolu hew na fi no 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 wali ko jode lolu mo it has to be clear the issue of goba yeah understand go gi bim commencer wa political will be wa you are right the president is the president aha understand yeah but political will be wa about li nga xamne mom lañ digon nit ñi i think dafa warona cut across yes that's true bing go gi bes ñewé ci ñi ci amna ci ñi fi am yow gis nga ko aha kay understand wa Pour ce que vous avez fait, c'est que vous avez fait des choses. C'est ce que vous avez fait. Vous avez fait des choses. 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 Vous avez fait Nen yew, understand ga? University be the pump students every every year si mbeda bi. Jiriti ai, MDI yenen college si hali yuo pump si deka bi. Nen jok nyu ubi sen bopa yu yew nyu pere puli ge deka bi. Si kote fudi nyu nasi bopa. National national nationalistic ways of thinking lain wara amsi reumi. Isinga Senegal su darajo he nyu nifu reumi la. Ah, nyabai jo. Su politik jodoh, dan nyawa hebat bukan deh. Wah, ibu nggak suka video minyak deh. Dan nyawa tek politik asal. Fok lulu mau amsi video mi, video mana dok? Amadu kontan dan nyawa yo fok ngadel si watan bi muntah jeh ni. Yo watan bi muntah jeh ni deh. Nyung lapai anak. Besok ada NPP deh. Nye kamera wah man. Ma brave pon dah tu. Wah, thank you very much. Semua orang lain mana mana gay fair dan price bi. Price bi, wah wah wah. Di nari member ni. Di nari member. But thank you so much for coming. We appreciate you. Anggap exams, but you 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 really wanted to be here, and we thank you very. Much. Thank you very much. Honorable. Yes, sir. Saying, yeah, my lady. As you munga, 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 the wild snow. Thank you very much. Jalan mai kan beda balam ada exam. Exam. Mangin ham, mangin dom. Demal, 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 demal. So, yeah. But finally, yes, sir. You know, you had Amadu. The politics in this country now. I mean, he wants to start activism, not direct but civil civic education. I mean, I agree on um, what he said when it comes to ideology. There's people don't have ideology. People talk uh, follow follow politician because of beliefs and just personalities, and that is what is happening in most of the parties in this country. And nehut be nehut, but that is the truth. Yeah, I mean, the issue of ideology, and I think at some point mm -hmm. um, we need to be a bit critical about that. Yeah. I mean. There are people that want, don't want to be carried away by dogma, mm -hmm. um, by any ideological stand to say, ideology. That's this is the ideology that I believe in. Mm -hmm. I mean, people go in for more tangible policies and programs that mm -hmm. can work for countries. Yeah. And at some point, it doesn't matter. If, for instance, your policies and programs are probably capitalist oriented, but they're the ones that can really work and solve the problems of the country, mm -hmm. people go in for it. Yeah. If your programs and policies are more socialist oriented, but they are the ones that are tangible and can work, they're workable, and they can solve the problems, you go for it. But I mean, uh, for me, it's not necessarily about ideology here, why pe people join in political parties, but I think it has to more do more with people not even understanding the reason why they join certain political parties. Lack of principles, lack of values. Every political party 
party must have principles. Every political party must have values that you stand for. And I always say that one fundamental principle that the second generation of Gambian politicians, and I always give them that credit. They have their bots, they have all the, you can say anything about them. Mm -hmm. You know, the Halifa Salas, the Sidi Ajatas, the Hussein Udabos. I mean, at least one fundamental principle that they stood for was that they believed that the government in place, starting with Doi, when Jawara was here, they believed that Jawara, you know, could not change things mm -hmm. in this country. They also did not believe in Yahya Jame. Mm -hmm. Hussein Udabo did not also believe in Yahya Jame. And that's why they stood in opposition continuously up to this stage. Yeah. If not for those values and principles that they held so dear to their heart, our democracy would not have been here today. So they stood for something. They stood for values. They stood for principles. And that's why we are here today. And this is what is missing in our politics now. Because we're supposed to have the birth of the third generation of Gambian politicians. But unfortunately, that's not happening. Some people will join parties, not because they don't know the ideology of that party, but because they lack principles, they lack values. And when they go into these political parties, all of a sudden, what we see is that they will jump and join another political party. And then we always see them. When they join incumbent, they will say, OK, our vision aligns. When did your vision align? Okay. In the first place, the reason why you decide to form another political party or you join another political party is because you believe that the one in government is not doing the right thing and you're going to provide alternative. So for me, instead of ideology, it is more about some of our politicians not having principles, not having values that they stand for. So it has more to do with lack of principles than lack of ideology. Finally, Uncle Dia, from me, when I, um, from what is, as I just said, from uh, Halifa Sala to Sinu Dabo to all these old politicians, the KMS and the CDS, these old politicians, they always believed in their parties. And it seems like they all never believe that it has to be because of government. For during almost 40 years or so now, they have been in opposition. But again, for them, it's not just to be in government. Yes, they want to be in government, but because they believed in what they believed in, they kept on going time and time and time up to now. UDP from 2022, Dabo, he kept on losing. Every five years he lost. He, I don't know how they do it. They come, me, if I lose one time, I'm just going to go to bed and sleep and never wake up. Yeah. But they keep waking up and still doing this whole thing and again and again with more zeal, more courage, more hope, believing tomorrow it will happen, right? In this day and age, we don't have that in our present day well, that's, that's, politicians. That's a fact. Yeah. What we want is Bugawi, when Munuma Yaga is the opposition. The Mawara Is that a way of and going? I, and I, and I want and we, yeah, you know, I, we have I, seen yeah, politicians I, here. Mm -hmm. After their parties lost in president election, they went in coma. No. So those things, is, and it's the youngest generation. Yeah, yes, I mean, how, I how, agree. I agree. I think, I think the, I mean, the uh, first generation or second generation politicians, as I uh, uh, described them, yeah. I think they were very committed. In, t in fact, they are still very committed to what they stand for. Uh, although, I mean, when we uh, listen to what Esa said, mm -hmm. sorry, Amadou said in yeah. his resignation letter, there is also that element of lack of democracy Inside, within the, within you know, the party, I mean, yes, internal yes. democracy within the parties. Yeah. And that also is affecting the opposition, particularly in this country. Because you will see that, you know, people, everything seems to, I mean, circle around so, an individual around the party, or the party, party leadership leaders, or something. Yeah. And that has to change, definitely. The parties have to, I mean, be seen as parties what? representing Sending its people. Uh, people. Yeah. Uh, membership base rather than, I mean, everything revolving around it. But I agree. I mean, there is definitely a lot of commitment with these people. Yeah. I mean, uh, and, um, you know, it shows. I mean, because for them, it is, they are committed to, uh, to the I cause, mean, to the, I mean, to what changes, they to the cause, in, yeah, yeah. what they believe in, and they actually want to see changes, and, positive changes done in and, this and, and more, this, there's this um, narrative that they try to peddle. I mean, they, because, you see, when we sit here too far through, we're talking to the ordinary Gambian there, and we want them to understand yeah. what really is happening. Yeah. Now, the younger generation of politicians, Gambian politicians, those that are coming up, um, you know, when they want to join incumbent, for instance, what they try to, because like you said, it's everybody's right to join any camp that you want yeah. to join. There's no problem about that. Yeah. But also, our democracy has been rebuilt or restored. Yeah. And we are working towards consolidation. And that consolidation can never happen if there is no vibrant opposition. Yeah. We Absolutely. must have vibrant opposition and civil society, society in place to yeah. consolidate that democracy. Definitely. Now, because one criteria is that there should be two tone of, of government. Mm -hmm. 
government removed from power through the ballot box, yes. not necessarily through coup d'etat. Yes. So if we don't have strong opposition, it means we're going to have self-perpetuating rule yeah. that the coalition government came to fight in 2016. Yeah. So if self-perpetuating rule continues in this country, if Barrow should rule for 15, 20, 25 years, then what is the difference between Barrow and Jawara and Jame? Uh, then we have not moved anywhere. No. Yeah. So the opposition must be genuine. And they try to fall, peddle this narrative to say, well, we want to walk, I mean, that's the new style, of, that's, that's not the new style of politics. The old style of politics in the Gambian, yeah. DAU will agree with me, has been Jawara will co-opt. Yeah, Jame co-opted, yeah. okay? And Barrow is doing the same. Mm -hmm. Just that, that Barrow is using it a new fashion, yeah. very tactical about it. Mm -hmm. Jame will give you position, co-opt you, and then put you in trouble at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. But Barrow will leave you hanging there. He will befriend you. Look at those people that went to him. Even those who endorsed him in the 2021 presidential election. Yeah. Only those that brought political capital, the APRCs, the NRPs, those are the ones that he compensated. But the rest of mankind who did not bring him any political capital, he did not compensate them. But they tried to make this false narrative to say that, you know, we want to work for the betterment of the country, and that's why we join. And also, they always say this. I can make reference to this. The CA leader, when he had an interview with the key TV, where he said that um, what impact have the opposition made by staying outside, talking about these problems constantly, holding the government to account, talking about them. What impact have they made I'm by sorry, being but outside? But now, I am also asking this question to him and all those politicians that are out there, young politicians that are joining, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. What impact have those people that have been co-opted or joined, what impact have they made by joining the incumbent? What impact, did the, with all due respect to them, the late Sheriff Deba, the late Lamin Wajuara, and all those that have been co-opted, what impact have they made inside? Okay? We've had even Lamin Wajuara, blessed memory, said this in one of his interviews, that the reason why, and I remember I had an interview with him, that was a research we were doing, I had an interview with him. He said the reason why he joined, he accepted Jamia's offer was because he wanted to fight Jamia, but being inside, that being outside, it was going to be difficult. It was never impacted. But what happened? What impact did he make when he was inside? The same thing with this new generation of Gambian politicians, these young politicians, hungry for position and all that thing. That is the hard fact, Fatu. They have the right, in as much as they have the right to join any political party, what we see is that most of them are hungry for position and power. That's the reality. To hit the nail on the head, this is the fact. What impact have they made? By being by joining the incumbent, if you are questioning the impact these politicians have made by staying outside, in fact, I can give you example of that impact. The Halifa Salas, the Usain Dabas, the Sidi Ajatas, by staying opposition, staying true to their principles and values, the impact was 2016. Mm -hmm. We yeah. were able to remove Yaya Jame yeah. because they stood firm by being opposition, they stood firm with their principles and values, and that is why we were able to remove Jame. If they all wanted, they could have joined Yaya Jame, oh, and yes. Yaya Jame would have been here still. Yeah. But they stood firm on their principles, on their values, to the extent that we had to remove Yaya Jame in 2016. I am responding to them to tell them that this is one impact that this second generation of Gambian politicians have made. They have their bots. They have their weakness. We can talk about that. All of us talk about these politicians. But I am asking them now, let them point out one impact that any Gambian politician who had been co-opted from the Jawara era to the Ajami era to now, what impact, one impact, just one impact, what impact have they made by joining them, by being inside? In fact, if you are inside, you are more compromised. Yeah. Of course, yes. Do you understand? You are more compromised. Yeah. There are politicians today who join government when they are there, they cannot talk. DA is able to write all these pieces. He's not there. If DA was in minister today, he would not be able to say. Absolutely not. Because we are living in a country where our political culture is dictating that if you are in government, you cannot talk about wrongs in government, exactly. which is false. Yeah. That's why when the vice president came out here, even though I have my issues with him, that he could have also talked about his area, the failures that have been registered, the challenges. But what he said was the fact. And people are out there to say that the vice president, you cannot talk about it. When you are in government, you cannot talk about problems there. I mean, our politics should move beyond that. So this generation of Gambian politicians that are out there mm -hmm. saying that you cannot, we also contribute to national development by joining, that's not the reality here. You can be in opposition yet contribute to national development. Being in opposition does not make you an enemy. In fact, you are contributing more by holding the government to account. The government is feeling pressured. The reason why you are contributing is that I give a typical example. If the government knows that there is no pressure coming, no strong or vibrant opposition, they can do whatever they want to do. But if the government knows that there is a vibrant opposition out there, well, if we do the wrong thing, they will come after us. Exactly. And that might expose us. They, the citizens might vote against us. They might do the right thing. 
So being in opposition, you are correcting, you are directing, you are having a remote, kind of. If you are strong, if you are vibrant, you know how to, how to hold the government to account, you are the remote controller. You dictate where TV station you choose or not. That's true. Finally, Uncle D, um, now going back to the, now that um, the oppositions, I see the GDC have released a statement about the viral video. Uh, lawyer Usain Udawo did issue a statement. The UDP issued a statement. In fact, yesterday, Buba interviewed him. He made very serious uh, um, points out. He, in fact, he said Baro should have resigned. Mm -hmm. His government is illegitimate. All of that. Um, the IEC said they are focused on the local government. What happens next? Um, is it going to be another thing like that? We move on, nothing happens? Well, as, as, far, as far as I'm concerned, the government is not going to do anything about this. Uh, I mean, for them, it's a fait accompli, and they've been doing this. I mean, I mean, definitely, I don't expect the government to take any action on this particular aspect at all. Absolutely. And that's it? No, I mean, I'm, I'm not expecting anything, because you have to understand that this is... At the end of the day, it boils down to partisan politics. Yeah. And it's about, I mean, who has the chance or opportunity to win elections. And I can tell you that the reason why they wouldn't do anything about it is that, OK, 2021 presidential election, Barrow won with 53%. OK, I'm not necessarily confirming that it was these known Gambians that voted for him. I was going to say that because somebody said, look, yes, this, there might be cross-border votings and other stuff, but it's not enough for the president to the margin was really high. I mean, the yeah, it, does, the margin it doesn't, was really even if, a known, so, let's say, for instance, if the matter goes to court today, yeah. even if the, I mean, there is evidence that non Gambians voted, the court will not necessarily say that, okay, but um, the non Gambians that voted, we are not up to 200,000 or whatever. It shows that there's foul play. I I'm think just it, giving it's an a principle that matters here. Yeah, yeah, it's a principle that and matters here. And the Constitution yeah. says any... Yeah, yeah. So for me, I'm not, I'm not necessarily insinuating that it was these known Gambians that made him win election or whatever. But I'm trying to, based on evidence, based on what we have seen, I mean, 2021 presidential election, he won with 53%. N local National Assembly elections, we saw how the NPP performed very bad. Mm -hmm. Okay? Um, Kiang West... I'm Kenyan Central, UDP parliamentarian who lost. Um, I had a radio show with him and he complained that non Gambians voted and that's why he lost. Okay, because for them they did not stop them from, from coming in. Yeah. But I mean, and that is something that the NPP will learn from. Yeah. That they have performed badly in the National Assembly election. Mm -hmm. Now the local government, because last week, two weeks ago I mentioned it here. People say, okay, sometimes UDP people will say, Barrow cannot do anything without us. It's because of us that he cannot do anything. Not that the UDP, I mean, when they talk or they, can, they will kill Barrow or whatever. No. Yeah. Because they control local government. local government. And that's why you cannot do anything. Yeah. All the things that are happening in KM today, nobody's giving credit to Barrow. They're giving credit to Talib. Yes. All the things that are happening in Banjul, giving credit to Rohim Ali mm -hmm. All the things that are happening, because this is local government. Yeah. So NPP as a government, a closer, NPP as a government in power will want to control this local government. And they have to control it. Yeah. If they really want yeah. mm -hmm. to be influential at this level, they have to control. Yeah. That is why they have to win the seats. So now the big battle will be because opposition also lost hope after the 2020 presidential election. Yeah. But National Assembly election gave them hope. hope yeah. yes. It gave them that modicum Confidence, of hope. Yeah. And now they will say we have to fight again to make sure we control local government so that we will frustrate the incumbent. But the incumbent will also be thinking, look, we have to secure these seats. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to do what we want to do. So now it will be a battle between yeah. opposition trying to retain, to prevent the incumbent, and the incumbent trying to gain more power. Yeah. No, by the also battle grounds are actually Banjul, KM, and, KM, and, and, Bika, and, and Western. Bikama. So and Western. When they will, those are the most important. Yeah, they are the most important. Yeah, but, because, also, yeah. but also yeah. the councils are important. Yes, they are all the important. The councillors. I mean, the important. councillors are important. Of course. Because that is, I think that's a problem that the one in CRR, the UDP guy in CRR, not also is facing somehow. I think it's, it's Sierra yeah, it's, where. It's, it's, it's Janjambure, yeah. Yeah, because you have a UDP guy there, but it's like major yeah, the councillors. It's Janjambure. I think that's what Aladdin yeah. was saying, yeah. the councillors. Yeah. The councillors are not yeah. necessarily all UDP. Yeah. Some of them have run away to join um, NPP. Yeah. So that's the problem. This local government election will be a battle over opposition trying to gain influence. I'm sorry, incumbent trying to gain influence by winning the local government. But the opposition also trying to retain their seats to frustrate the incumbent more. So this is the battle it will be. I mean, another, and, and, and at the end of the day... Another angle, mm -hmm. 
will it prove something mm -hmm. that the president won the presidency with over 200,000 mm -hmm. hygiene and lost the National Assembly to the oppositions if combined mm -hmm. and did not win anything in the in the in the mostly densely exactly. populated, the most populated areas. Part of the if country. that repeats mm -hmm. in the local government elections mm -hmm. the, the MPP will do everything to make sure that doesn't repeat because that will only say confirm what the opposition are saying they stole the election but, but, because yeah, but there also there, there will be another it may not necessarily confirm no, there but could I be mean, I mean what the opposition it could it could it could at some point yeah. at some point validate the argument but the not entirely what I'm saying validate I want to say yeah, sorry, not yes. entirely yeah. because at, we have to also understand that our elections the dynamics keep on changing yeah the num mostly the number of people that vote in presidential election do not necessarily vote in local no. government elections. Yes, but in our political cycle, I, I from mean, Jawara to today, anytime the incumbent, I, I was going if to the that. President wins the presidency. I was they coming win to that. All of the no, I was coming to that. Elections. I was coming to that. Yeah. I was coming to that. What I'm trying to say, because mm -hmm. it's an, I'm providing an analysis, yeah. that at some point it might not entirely be yeah. that okay, the election was stolen, yeah. but it could validate an argument. Are, are, it could validate an argument. argument. Yeah, yes. but I'm trying to also say that mm -hmm. it may not necessarily be like, for instance. Maybe the turnout is always good in presidential, yeah. but somehow poor in parliamentary. Because local government also, yeah. the candidate matters here. Yeah. Presidential is only one candidate people vote for. Mm -hmm. But in local government, the National Assembly election is the candidate that matters. Yeah, Especially the if local, the people don't know, appreciate. Yeah. It's the local. Yeah. Don't appreciate the candidate. That contributes a lot. Okay, so at the end of the day, I mean, like you said, mm -hmm. yes, it has been there. Mostly the incumbent wins with majority of seats. Yeah. You look at even 2016. Mm -hmm. After the 2016 election, 2017 parliamentary election, yeah. UDP had influence, right? Yes. And they had 31 parliamentary mm -hmm. seats. Yeah. Yeah. So that shows that the one that has an advantage in government, an incumbent of adva advantage of incumbency, yeah. always win with majority, yeah. uh, absolute majority, when mm -hmm. it comes to um, local government election or parliamentary election. Yeah. So it tells us that there is a problem somewhere. Something is wrong within the NPP, something is not going right. Yeah. To the extent that from Banjul to Jara Soma, yeah. the president could have only one seat. Yeah. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So uh, there's something, there's something we, we need to look into that very well. Yeah. But I, I think at the end of the day, like I said, this local government election is very important for the it incumbent, is. It is. but also it very is. important for the Everybody, opposition. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's another way to move towards consolidating our democracy. It's another way to make the opposition more vibrant and vocal and strong and more participatory in our democracy. But if the incumbents will control it, then the next target will be parliamentary. And they, I can guarantee you, if they control local government, yeah. if they win local government with comfortable majority, then the next target will be parliamentary because presidential will be foregone conclusion. Local government is very important here, unless and until the dynamics keep on changing. Because at some point, I'm very cautious about presenting, um, predicting elections in the Gambia, yeah. because it can always change. The dynamics can always change. But let's hope that the incumbent does not control local government elections, does not win with absolute majority. There but has to be. It's going to be tough, but I cannot see them controlling. I mean, winning in KM, for instance, or even Banjul. In even in Banjul. I mean, probably Western would be a. More West, West Coast will be a bit yeah. tough. West Coast yes. will be a bit yeah. tough. But I think it will be very tough for the incumbent as well. Of course. Because yes, a lot, yes, lot of factors. I mean, let's factors. look at, I think it's what happened in the U.S. You have the midterm elections. Mm -hmm. Every time during the midterm election, the opposition seems to... The know, opposition seems because things yeah. are not going right. Yeah, exactly. So, and no, that's what happened in, local, in the National Assembly exactly. election. Yes. We and voted for Barrow in December. To repeat itself January, February, well, yeah. March, April, things were not going right and Barrow lost. And now... I think I'm not getting better. I'm and getting worse. And that, that, that is good for our democracy. It is. It is. Having it is. a balance of government. It is. It is. That is good. You know, we. You know, it, it empowers our, our democracy. And it, it's yeah. Strong, it's strong. But but there's one thing also that I want to talk about about this viral video about the parliamentarian. It's not just not only the issue of documentation, but he made something that a lot of people. Oh, he said something. Yeah, I'll break. Break, a lot of yeah, people tend yeah. to ignore. Huh? Yeah. I mean, I think that is so insulting yeah, um, to the Gambia. In fact, um, in fact, there are a member of parliament can be so uninformed mm -hmm. well, or less well, informed well, to the well, extent well, of... Yes, uh, the moment <laughs> we started calling it the Gambia Bridge, mm -hmm. in the first place, you remember that bridge was open when it was more of 
to, to do a political campaign for Makisal. Yeah. The bridge was not ready, but we had to sacrifice to do a name change. This was a historical place that yeah. had a name that was something really we should have preserved. But because Maki was going to election, and he needed to use that as a political tool. Yeah. It was sold to the Senegalese as this was a joint bridge that Gambia and Senegal owns. And being our big brothers, they thought they owned this bridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was sold to them yeah. that way. To the point, the name was changed. Now, don't tell me they were misinformed. They no, 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 no. I'm not, I'm not that, necessarily saying they were that's, misinformed. That's, but how, that's what they I'm, were I'm trying to say it shows how... We gave well, it to of them. Course, yeah. They were misinformed. I mean, but, yeah, no, but, no, 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 no. but they were misinformed yeah. anyway. The fact that we called it the Senegal Bridge, yeah. yeah. that was the... But yeah, so it shows one thing also. Uh, yeah. well, the sovereignty of the Gambia. Yeah. I mean, to the extent that even our development, you know, yeah. projects or initiatives, Senegal has to take claim. Yeah. Um, you know, claim ownership of it at some point, and which, which is so, I mean, so it, it shows about our foreign policy also towards Senegal, and I think yeah. Senegal is very strategic in their foreign policy yeah. towards the Gambia, but do we really have a strategic foreign policy towards no, we Senegal? Don't. This we is something that we need to, yeah. I've always been talking about this, yeah. no, we don't. that people tend to ignore. Yeah. Yeah. Senegal, even the ambassadors that they send to the Gambia, these are seasoned career exactly. diplomats. And Gambia is not but a separate nothing party. Personal, Gambia nothing personal, but look at our, di our, 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 our we diplomat need a there. very seasoned person. This guy was in Senegal. UTG. Yes. Yeah. He was at that's UTG, that's all of a sudden moved as Minister of Youth and Sports, and then I mean, we catapulted him to, uh, be the, to, to be the diplomat. Yeah. I mean, that is really something that we, I mean, really need to look into our strategy, to our foreign policy towards Senegal, strategically. Even look at the issue of Fony. I mean, Senegalese, hold, Senegal is hold. using the Gambia as a launch pad. Yeah. And why do we need Senegalese forces there? And only okay. now and then we're hearing about, we're hearing we incidents of, I mean, violence or killing in that area. I think that is really troubling. Yeah. yeah, thank you very much, gentlemen. That was an interesting conversation. Dear, thank you very much okay, for coming and keep writing. Look, these things that you do, yeah. I mean, sometimes it can be very uncomfortable, but at some point, you know, days like this will come, people will say, oh, when he said it, it was very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. But today we can sit and talk about them, and I think those things are very, very important. Thank you very much, Esther. Thank you very much. And we will see you next week, inshallah. Uh, goodbye. And we Senegal win against. The United Kingdom. I mean, but have you abandoned, no, have abandoned England? England? Have you United. abandoned England now? Not, no, not United it. Kingdom, it's England. England. Okay. Yeah, I said that earlier. Somebody said, no, it's different. It's not United Kingdom. I'm yeah. like, OK. But when did you abandon England? No, I abandoned England from after their first game. No, I agree. Yes, I uh, definitely support Senegal, and I want them to win the UK. Uh, you, England. You, England. My teams are United States, Senegal team one, and then the US, and then Ghana, and any other African team. But Senegal, of course. But we are going to win again. In yeah, amen, amen. Okay, maybe it's because the queen is no more alive. That's why. Uh, yeah. <laughs> don't, 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 don't do that to me now. This is football. When it comes to the monarch and everything, I have a special... But, but you know, people always say, I mean, these, these, are, these are conversations. Sometimes we try to collect, okay, to say, we must support Senegal, they are our neighbors. But I think football is also beyond geography. Yeah. At some point, people have to understand that football is about where your heart is. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's about, about Africa. Feeling. Because yeah. it's Africa. Yeah, it, uh, that's what I'm saying. But at some point, it's a, for the game of sports. We talk about diversity, so uniting love, people together. So sometimes bring, people go beyond geography. I people love go what they race. bring to the game. The Senegalese are very, very, they yeah, are yeah. noisy. When they are somewhere, you see their presence. That's what I love about them. They bring so much to the game. They bring <laughs> all the extras. Just like England as well. They bring that, but I think definitely... Well, I think well, for me, Senegal, Sadio Mane is my player, and that's it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sadio is not there, but because Sadio is not there, we still... Good night to you all. Good luck to Senegal, and good luck to the United States. See you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>
GIA, the pride of the Gambia. Every day is a new opportunity to make sure our first impressions are always our best and to see possibilities on the horizon. To make our facilities and services more accessible and find freedom all around us. With a location proximity to active markets, with a liberal air transportation policy, that daily pursuit is how we turn everyday opportunities for you. For all destination marketing support, customized packages for new existing airlines and operators, and for a highly ranked tourist destination, the Gambia Civil Aviation Authority is here to serve. We regulate air transport, operate and manage BIA technical requirements, merge with commercial considerations. We have experienced and well-trained aviation professionals to cater for your needs. For investment opportunities in building airport hotels, shopping malls, playground for children, do contact us on 4472-831, 4472-893. Gambia Civil Aviation Authority. We go beyond daily.